are my personal views and opinions, to which you may listen and come to your own conclusions, some of which you may find uncomfortable. History is a crazy trip. Like, when you actually look at the passage of time, you can see it starts to ripple if you know how to pay attention. Libra Primus is proof of this. I promise this will blow your mind. Libra Primus was released by Cicada 3301 around when it first appeared on 4chan, 4chan itself being central to the timeline. See, before we can talk about Libra Primus itself, we must take a trip through time. Let us take our TARDISes back to 1907. In 1907, an Aleister Crawley establishes Thelema. Yes, this is important, and yes, it is relevant, because Libra Primus is most definitely Thelemic. I believe Aleister Crawley is at least the illustrator of it, and that is what I plan on focusing my videos on. I have found mirrored images in Libra Primus that no one else has seen. I could also take the history of the group back to John D. The origins of the agency itself goes all the way back to Elizabeth I and was organized by Sir Francis Welshingham. John D.'s signature even inspired the codename 007. That's right. We are talking about spies and rogues. Aleister Crawley considered himself a reincarnation of Kelly. In 1914, World War I started, and Aleister Crowley had joined the British intelligence and became a double agent. He worked both within Germany and the United States, and his job was to help Germany create propaganda to keep the U.S. from joining the war in defense of Great Britain. He would hire and manage agents that would take credit for the dirty work. This is how psychological warfare works. He specialized in infiltration and agent provocateur. Six years later, the first historically documented meme appeared. In 1920, the term 23's could do started popping up everywhere. Radio advertisements, magazines, movies. The Beast had written a poem ten years previously, and the poem reads, In 23's could do, what man is at ease in his inn, get out. Wide is the world, and cold, get out, thou hast become an initiate. Get out, thou canst get out by the way thou comest in. The way out is the way. Get out, for out is love, and wisdom, and power. Get out. If thou hast tea already, first get you tea, then get out. And so, at last, get out from the Book of Lies. 23 Skidoo would become more of a slang for telling someone to scram or go away, but Aleister Crowley meant that you shouldn't feel comfortable staying in one place your whole life. You should really go out and experience the world to understand the world and experienced the world he did. He partied so hard that in 1930, Oxford University banned him. You should also ignore the fact that during World War II, almost all propaganda for the Allied war came from Alistair, including the V hand gesture and the crow foot peace sign, which is also a Norse rune. In 1939, Jack Parsons, a rocket scientist from NASA, converts to Thelema and adds an uh, extra spicy science kick that adds the validity of Aleister Crawley being involved with Cicada 3301 and absolutely includes Q because just like the creators of Q, Jack Parsons didn't listen. Jack Parsons was a Caltech researcher, was in the middle of military projects that no one thought were really going to work. People were so skeptical that the group got nicknamed Suicide Club. Whatever Parsons' beliefs were outside of the scientific world, 
East was pretty brilliant and ended up laying the groundwork for rocket technology and NASA's jet propulsion labs. This was before he got involved with Aleister Crowley and L. Ron Hubbard. Crowley was well established by this time, and Hubbard w was little more than a small time science fiction writer. Parsons neglected to keep his associations with Crowley quiet. After an embarrassed U.S. government paid him to quietly go away, he continued correspondence with Crowley and became the head of his Ordo Templi Orientis in America. Parsons eventually hooked up with Hubbard, and Crowley was not pleased. He called Hubbard a complete charlatan, even though Parsons swore that Hubbard was at the top of the list when it came to being dedicated to the Thelemic religion, Crowley thought Hubbard was a fraud and made his stance quite well known. Parsons absolutely did not listen and entered into a bizarre partnership with Hubbard. Soon they attempted to summon a woman whom Crowley called Babylon, the Scarlet Woman the goddess of their lemic roots. Parsons and Hubbard attempted the ritual with the uh, actress named Marjorie Cameron. Scientology has this fixation on actors and talented people because they're only interested in money versus spiritual growth. Parsons wrote to Crowley ecstatic that he had managed to summon his red-headed goddess. Crowley was less than impressed, writing to one of his associates, Apparently Parsons or Hubbard or somebody is producing a moon child. I get fairly frantic when I contemplate the idiocy of these goats. To be clear here and to add a little clarification, all they did was have strange fetish sex with Marjorie Cameron. They didn't summon anything. All they did was make a baby. And Crowley didn't have to worry too much. The whole thing would fall apart with a bizarre con game where Hubbard convinced Parsons to front the cash for buying a bunch of yachts so Hubbard could reap the profits. In 1947, Aleister Crowley left his body, but for sure he didn't leave this world. Not even 10 years later, Disneyland opens and both the music and movie industries kicked off with countless Aleister Crowley inspired content, which led into the hippie movement with even more Aleister Crowley inspired content. It's like Aleister Crowley himself is the basis for cultural anything. Pop, rock, rap. If it's art of some kind, rest assured, if you can name it, the beast has put his dick into it. I am dead serious at this point. In 1988, producer and lyricist Sandy Perlman from the Blue Oyster Cult had to separate from the band and form his own garage band just to produce an album called Imaginos. Literally no one else in the group wanted to help Perlman produce this album and and he had to borrow Joe Satriani, Aldo Nova, and The Doors guitarist Robbie Krieger. The tale combines elements of gothic literature, science fiction, and is strongly inspired by the work of H.P. Lovecraft. A bedtime story for the children of the damned. Imaginos is what Perlman described as an interpretation of history, an explanation for the onset of World War I, or a revelation of the occult origins of it, which he crafted on elements of mythology, sociology, and alchemy, and science, occultism. He described it as a combination of a horror story and a fairy tale. And this is all supposed to be a coincidence. In 1994, the internet was just beginning. It was new and not a lot of people were on. But this didn't stop one of the first viral ARG or augmented reality games to gain popularity in Pink Floyd's Enigma. The public's Enigma is an internet phenomenon and is still unsolved. It first began with cryptic messages posted by a user identified only as Publis to the unmoderated Usenet newsgroup alt.music.pinkfloyd.com. 
through the PNET Remailer, a now defunct anonymous information exchange service similar to 4chan. The Messenger proposed a riddle in connection with the 1994 Pink Floyd album The Division Bell, promising that the answer would lead to a reward. Guitarist David Gilmore denied any involvement, while album artist Storm Thurgeson was bemused. According to drummer Nick Mason, EMI records were responsible. It remains unclear if the enigma involves a genuinely solvable puzzle or a convoluted hope. The message reads, My friends, you have heard the message Pink Floyd has delivered, but have you listened? Perhaps I can be your guide, but I will not solve the enigma for you. All of you must open your minds and communicate with each other, as this is the only way the answers can be revealed. I may help you, but only if obstacles arise. Listen. Read. Think. Communicate. If I don't promise you the answers, would you go? Publis. A follow-up message clarified the challenge. As some of you suspected, the Division Bell is not like its predecessors. Although all great music is subject to multiple interpretations, in this case there is a central purpose and a designed solution. For the ingenious person or group of persons who recognize this and where this information points to, a unique prize has been secreted. How and where the division bell? Listen again, look again, as your thoughts will steer you. Lead the blind while I stare out the steel in your eyes. Lyrics, artwork, and music will take you there. In order to refute the ensuing skepticism, a public agreed to provide proof. On the 16th of July, 1994, he delivered a prediction to validate the trust of those who believe as well as to reconcile the doubts of others, I have gone to great lengths to plan the following display of communication. Monday, July 18th, East Ruthfield, New Jersey, approximately 10.30 p.m. Flashing white lights, there is an enigma. Trust, air quotes, the plan, air quotes. On the night of uh, July the 18th, 1994, patterns in the lights on the front stage at the Pink Floyd concert in East Ruefield Field momentarily spelled out the words Enigma Publis. This seems like an early attempt of Cicada 3301 reaching out, mayhaps testing to see how receptive the public was to these kinds of challenges. It even started in an anonymous forum, very similar to 4chan. Four years later, panic ensues. The year 2000 problem, also known as the Y2K problem, the Y2K scare, millennium bug, Y2K bug, Y2K glitch, Y2K error, or simply Y2K, refers to the potential computer errors related to the formatting and storage of calendar data for dates in after the year 2000. Many programs represented four digit years with only the final two digits, making the year 2000 indistinguishable from 19,000. Computer systems' inability to distinguish dates correctly had the potential to bring down worldwide infrastructures for computer-reliant industries. In the years leading up to the turn of the century, the public gradually became aware of the Y2K scare, and individual companies predicted that the global damage caused by the bug would require anything between 4 million to 6 billion to rectify, and should really be renamed the Y2K Ponzi scheme. Four years later, 4chan was born. 4chan itself being one of the main sources of internet culture. It's very important to bring that up. Lots of memes started on 4chan. It, it's not a, an exclusively a 4chan thing, but 
most of the meme content you see or are using came from 4chan. And with 4chan came slash B, the craziest place on the internet and probably the closest thing to Aleister Crowley's personality humanly possible. Slash B was intricate in organizing the largest anonymous protest in history called the Million Masked March, also known as Operation Vendetta. This is where the Guy Fox meme came from and was organized on Slash B by Project Chanology. Chanology is a combination of 4chan and Scientology. The project was started in response to the Church of Scientology attempts to remove material from highly publicized interviews of Tom Cruise, who is also a Scientologist. And this was in 2008. Then in 2012, we collectively lost our minds again and thought we were all going to die because the Mayan calendar ran out of time. Also, Cicada3301 started publishing their puzzles on 4chan around 2012, one of them being Libra Primus. The first puzzle was solved by Marco Swainer. According to him, those who solved the puzzles were asked questions about their support of information freedom, online privacy and freedom, and rejection of censorship. Those who answered satisfactorily at this stage were invited to a private forum where they were instructed to devise and complete a project intended to further the ideals of the group. He did not finish his work on the method of general decryption and the website was removed. One book titled Libra Primus, literally first book, contains many pages, only some of which have been deciphered. In addition to using many varying techniques, to encrypt, encode, or hide data. These clues also referenced a wide variety of books, poetry, artwork, and music. Therefore, there are no new Cicada 3301 puzzles. As I have established here, Q isn't a puzzle, Q is a manifestation. That's my timeline.